Welcome to TV3. On this week's episode, we're covering the Shimada Brothers, twin GNXs, I bought a pair of legs, and of course, we'll round things out by answering some of your comments and questions in the feedback section. Over this past weekend, I went to the Mississauga Collectors Expo, or Ontario Collectors Con, or some toy show, I don't know. The name always changes every quarter. In any case, I was there, and I just want to say a big thank you to all you who showed up and said hi to me. That was awesome, and it was great to talk toys and meet with you all. I also bought a lot of stuff, which we'll cover on later on in the show, but for now, let's check out the news. So I guess the big Marvel thing at the moment is Thor 3 Ragnarok, and of course, while the movie is out, the toys have also been revealed. These come from Bandai under their SH Figure Arts line, and first up is Thor. Now, I think this figure looks pretty darn cool. I think it definitely looks better than the Thor that was released for Age of Ultron, because this version of Thor doesn't do with the whole anime stylization. This one just goes for, this is the Thor that looks like Chris Hemsworth? Yes, that's his name. It's going to come in two flavors. There's going to be the one that just releases with the Thor itself, and then there's going to be the one that comes with the lightning effect parts for a little bit of a premium cost. So pick your poison. If you don't have a Thor yet, this is probably the one to get, especially considering all the hype around the movie seems to be very positive. Of course, matching this release is a Hulk from Thor Ragnarok, and I think this is the one that, of the two, is of more interest to myself. I thought that the original SH Figure Arts Hulk released under Age of Ultron was fantastic as a toy. It was probably my favorite release from that lineup, but again, like the Thor, it wasn't very realistic in its sculpt. It definitely went for a more uh, anime, cartoonish look to it, and this one from Ragnarok has more of a realistic look and it's got the armor it's huge it's going to be expensive but i mean it's the hulk every time you get a big figure and the hulk has always proved this you got to pay the big bucks the thing about both hulk and thor is that they are unfortunately p bandai exclusives i believe they are coming to the west under the release of bluefin so they shouldn't be too hard to get down the line nevertheless these are some pricey figure arts uh, but hey, what can you expect? It's Marvel, it's Disney, they demand money. Next up, news comes from Square Enix under their Play Arts Kai line. And Play Arts Kai have, for a while now, been doing a lot of Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, or just Final Fantasy VII Remake releases under Play Arts Kai. And as much as I love Final Fantasy VII, I have definitely been trying to hold off on buying any of them because I've never been the biggest fan of Play Arts Kai, but this next release might be the one that gets me to dive in, and that is the release or announcement of Zack Fair. Zack Fair being, of course, the coolest hero that never was in Final Fantasy VII, and he essentially has the cloud body with the Zack Fair head sculpt. I mean, he even comes with the Buster Sword because, hey, that was his. And if you haven't played Final Fantasy VII, you probably don't know who this is and why is he dressed like Cloud, but for everyone else who has, you know the reason, you know that he's like the coolest guy. It's being released under the Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core video game license, so that's the where they've pulled their, their inspiration from, and I, I guess, where else would you pull it from, right? So I think he looks super cool. I am sorely, sorely tempted. I, I don't know what I'm going to do about this one. I mean, I was able to pass on the Sephiroth, the Cloud the the Barrett Vincent whatever but this one is the one that I feel like I need to check out. Speaking of other hot boys in the anime scene, have you heard of Fate Stay Night? Well, Figma have continued to push up more releases and their latest one is Lancer. Lancer of course being the fan favorite dude from Fate Stay Night and he's got the spear, he's got his cute little Jedi ponytail and I've never been a fan of Lancer, but I know Lancer is huge amongst the community for Fate Stay Night, and this figure looks pretty cool. The, I suppose, big surprise about this is that there's no Good Smile exclusive, so feel free to buy it anywhere at a discounted rate, and you will get yourself a nice-looking Figma of Lancer. I don't really have much else to say. It's Fate Stay Night. I've kind of dropped off, but for those who are still in the mix, hey, more stuff to buy. Continuing on with Max Factory, they have shown off a very cool release for their Nendoroid series. This is for Nendoroid Moore, and this is 
Kirby plus his Robobot armor. And how cool is this? It's essentially just a giant armor that you could shove your Nendoroid Kirby inside. Now, you can buy the robot armor with Kirby. However, if you already have a Kirby figure, you can just buy the armor separately. It's a marginal difference in price. I mean, if it were me, I would just buy the set that comes with, with Kirby and the robot armor. So, yeah, that's, that's how I see it. Nevertheless, it is a cool-looking design. I mean... I'm not the biggest Kirby fan, but throw him in a giant robot suit and there's really not much I can't. I mean, I'm not the biggest Kirby fan, but hey, you put that little pink blob in a giant robot suit and I'm pretty much sold. It comes out in June for the retail price of about 70 bucks, so plenty of time to think about it. Not cheap, but hey, again, Kirby robot suit, what's there not to love? Of course, the biggest news in the Nendoroid scene in the past couple of weeks has been the reveal of the Overwatch Shimada Brothers. Genji and Hanzo. Now these pair of toys look fantastic. I mean, who doesn't love the Cyborg Ninja? And as much as I hate Hanzo, I won't deny the fact that he probably has one of the coolest designs in all of Overwatch. Uh, what I like about these Nendroid releases is that along with their swords and arrows and just looking cool, they come with their dragon effects so you can recreate that scene in their animated short where they face off. So that's super cool. They're both going to be hidden around the June, July release date, each going for about 45 bucks. So not outside the norm for Nendoroid pricing. I'm personally just happy to see that Good Smile are continuing along with their Overwatch releases. They're not necessarily releasing them as fast as I would like, but they're definitely coming along at a steady clip. Hopefully the next few releases are going to be tanks because that's the class I play and I need me a D.Va and a Reinhardt. Hey. Throw on a Roadhog and a Winston too. All right, let's round things up with some Gundam announcements. And the first one is kind of an oddball being released under the Reborn 100 line. It is the Gun Cannon Detector. And I don't know what to say about this. I mean, do, I think it's a pretty neat design, but it's definitely from left field. However, I will say the Reborn 100 series has... That's kind of been their thing, right? They only do the super obscure suits because they're relatively cheap to make and they don't have to commit to, you know, a big expensive master grade. So yeah, this is not something that I'm necessarily interested in, but I'm happy for those who are who are psyched to see this be an actual thing. Now, arguably the biggest news in Gundam for the past week was the release of Gundam Battlelog Episode 4. And before I talk about the kits that were released there, can I just say that might have been the worst Battlelog episode to date. It was just boring until maybe the credit sequence. But otherwise, that had to be the worst Battlelog episode to date. Which kind of sucks because it mostly featured PGXia. But anyways, the other kits that were worth looking at were the pair of GNXs. Now the first one is the GNX4 type Gundam build fighters. And this one is, well first of all, I do like the colors. But it looks kind of like just a slightly modified GNX. Now there's not really too much to say on this one, at least not for me. It just seems like a slightly modified GNX in Gundam Build Fighters. I mean, it's got some cool colors to them, but otherwise, there's not much I can say on it. And I suppose that's what justifies the whole reason behind this being a P Bandai exclusive. So if you want it, it's going to be a little bit tricky to get. But honestly, it's not as cool as the other GNX that was announced, which was the Strike GNX. Now, this kit looks real cool. It definitely has more customization to it. I love the big gun. But my favorite part about this release is the head sculpt. It looks kind of like one of those radar dish Gundams. However, it's not as large and it just feels like it's super sleek and, and useful. So I'm more into this. I like the really dark militaristic colors to it. And I like the orange beam saber as well. Looking forward to this. It comes out at the end of January, 2018 for a retail price of about 2,100 yen. So I'm pumped. I hope you guys are too. All right, like I mentioned at the top of the episode, this past weekend I attended a toy show in Mississauga or Toronto, whatever you want to call it, and I picked up a couple things. Here they are. I'm going to go through them and show you what I got. So first of all, you probably have seen this already if you visit my channel frequently. This is the Beast Box Jojo. This is the cube that turns into a Robo Gorilla who's colored like uh, Ava Unit 1. I saw it and I immediately had to have it, so I bought it and I'm pretty satisfied with it. I kind of regret not getting Dio. Dio is the smaller yellow cube who looks, who transforms into a tiny T-Rex. 
this is pretty cool. I definitely recommend checking out Beast Box when you get a chance. It's it's worth your time. At least I think so. Now, while I was at the show, I also met up with fellow YouTuber Vangelis. You may know him. He does a lot of Transformers things. And he was getting rid of all his extras from the Soto Kamen Rider X-Aid stuff. And I had to get myself the uh, Dan Kuroda or Gem. Basically, the black and purple X-Aid, the better one. And so here it is. He sold them to me for a good price, and I'm pretty pumped. I've never experienced this line. I was going to do a video, but I figure maybe I'll just do a live stream of me building it and putting it all together and see how we go from there. So look for that in the near future. Of course, the thing I was hunting down at this toy show were a set of figures from Iron Factory, and it was this set. This is the War Giant Attacker Set A. It comes with Armor Boar and Bazooka Hound, other no otherwise known as Brawl and Swindle, the legs of the Transformers Combiner Onslaught. No, Bruticus. Whew, I almost, I, was, I don't know what I was thinking there. Uh, Bruticus is my favorite combiner from Transformers, and when Iron Factory announced this set, I knew I had to get it. Unfortunately, it's being released in waves, so they only have the feet out right now. I gotta say, as a pair of legs, it's pretty awesome. The figures themselves are cool too, um, but the one thing about Iron Factory that I've always felt with every release is I just wish they had one guy there to just do a final check, just a final run on the, on the figures releases, because I don't think there's ever been an Iron Factory set that I've bought where I don't have to like shave down parts so things fit perfectly and the transformation just feels so they always feel so pinpoint accurate like there's only enough clearance as as the CAD model would suggest it to be but in practice it's a lot harder you know so I just wish that they uh they were able to do that but otherwise really cool toys definitely worth checking out now, in addition to all the things I got at the toy show, there was one other item that came in the mail for me, and it's arguably the thing that I've been most psyched for, and that is this. This is the Nendoroid Tracer from Overwatch. Now, we just talked about the Nendoroid Shimada Brothers. This is the first of the Overwatch Nendoroids. Took me a while to pick one up, but I finally got it, and I'm super psyched. I love Overwatch, as you guys know. I, hey, I'm wearing a D.Va shirt, right? And... Yeah, when it comes to merch in Overwatch, especially merch from companies that I like, like Good Smile, I can't help myself. I got to get all of it. So can't wait to crack this open. Probably will see a video about this very, very soon. All right, we've reached the feedback section of the show, and this is the time where you ask me questions and I give you answers. First one comes from Blixen, who is Princess Type V3. Princess Type V3 is not me. Princess Type V3, well, she'll be back soon enough, so don't you worry about it. Ralph Timothy says, Hi Type V3, what can you say about the Bring Arts teasing of Zidane and Vivi? I'm super pumped. First of all, Bring Arts is a toy line that I'm super interested in. It's essentially the smaller scale of Play Arts Kai, and Zidane and Vivi come from my favorite Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy IX. I want nothing more than an awesome Zidane. So I'm super pumped to see what, if those toys actually materialize. I will buy them in a heartbeat. Everyone loves Vivi, right? Who doesn't like Vivi? If you're a Final Fantasy fan, you gotta love Vivi. So pretty psyched to see those. Marie King 14 hey, V3, can you give me tips for painting MG inner frames? Your review of The Amazing Red Warrior was my first video from you I saw, and I've been thinking about repainting inner frames from my GM Sniper 2, but I'm worried about getting joints stuck from paint, top coat players, and paint chipping from joints. So here's the thing. If you want to paint your inner frame, you have to take it all apart. There's just no getting around that. You got to take the pieces apart, like all the way down to where they're single pieces, and then paint them all separately, and then let them dry. As for chipping and scratching, guess what? They're moving parts. They are going to chip and scratch. That's just that's just the sacrifice you're going to make if you decide to paint your joints. Why do you think when you see pro-level uh, paint, paint schemes and dioramas, their Gundams don't move anymore because they're going to scratch the paint? I mean, it's it, it sucks, but like if either, it, it's either 
you're going to paint and make it look super awesome and have it not move, or you're going to keep it bare and make it the most playable toy, but then it doesn't look the greatest. So you got to find a balancing act somewhere in between these two areas. And, you know, for me personally, I just don't care if things get scratched. I mean, whatever. They're not supposed to look pristine anyway. Kaid asks, hey, type V3, how do I get myself a cute girlfriend? Also, give me your best jabated face. So that second one, I'm not going to do that. Sorry. As for how you get yourself a cute girlfriend, well, first of all, you got to find a cute girl and then you got to talk to her. And it's as simple as one, two, three. Will you go out with me? Done. Nicholas Martinez says, yo, type V3. Have you ever bought a replica weapon, toy or cosplay prop online? or in a store before. No, I have not bought any sort of prop replica. I really do want to one day or of something. I've always wanted uh, Captain Malcolm Reynolds pistol from Firefly. However, when it comes to prop replicas, they're just like one of those things that are on my to buy list when I have extra, extra budget. And it's always at the bottom of that list. So I have not had any experience buying prop replicas so far. Unless you would count the Morpher from, from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, because I do have that, the Legacy Morpher, and yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I mean, I don't really do much with it, but it's it's a neat thing to have. Star Force Network asks, do you plan on getting Gundam Versus for the PS4 or at least tell your impressions of it? So funny story, I was planning to make a video of my initial impressions of Gundam Versus when they had the beta out because I was in the beta and I was about to make a video, but because I don't have like proper uh, recording software, I was just going to use the built-in recording system on the PlayStation 4. However, it was blocked. Apparently Bandai set blocking rights on the beta so you can't actually record videos from Gundam Versus. Um, it's not a game that I'm looking forward to picking up anytime soon, maybe when it's on a sale, but at the moment I have no plans to really look into it. But it seems like a fun game. I mean, apart from the fact that the main story has no subtitles so you can't understand it if you don't know Japanese, but hey, I mean, that's just a small thing, I guess. And finally, from Magical Snickers Bar, what is the most overrated Gundam series in general? For me, it's Build Fighters. Well, Magical Snickers Bar, you are wrong. That's the best Gundam series. Don't argue with me. Hmm, the most overrated Gundam series is... I'm just messing around. It's not a hard question. It's Gundam Wing, and I'll tell you why it's Gundam Wing. Gundam Wing is, first of all, it's just a bad show. It's full of hypocrisy, and it's super boring and redundant. The show is about promoting peace, right? You know, space, earth, conflict, but they need peace. So they send down peacekeepers. Who are these peacekeepers? Well, they're five teenagers with attitude. I mean, no, sorry, that's Power Rangers. They're five teenagers from broken families. Even better, right? And how do they promote peace? Through giant mecha battles. That's right. They promote peace by terrorizing people with giant robots. Now, the show has some really nice and... and high points to it like the soundtrack probably the best in all of Gundam I would say you know the soundtrack for Gundam Wing is pretty fantastic but that's kind of like the only thing I can think about the characters they have like these amazing philosophical speeches but it doesn't really matter because when you're watching it especially when you're watching it you know as a kid all you see are these amazing Gundams with angel wings or one has dragon hands the other one is just full of guns and one guy likes to walk the desert, so it's it's full of eye candy that really draws your attention away from the from the small but important stuff. Now you can sit there and and you can tell me that there are worse Gundam shows, and you would be right. You know, Ray Conquista and G and and C Destiny are definitely worse, but overrated, no, because the thing about Gundam Wing is, especially for those of us here who grew up with Gundam in the West. Gundam Wing is the starting point, you know, when when as a community, we all think about Gundam and people ask us, they say, well, what's what is it that that introduced you to Gundam? What is the foundation of Gundam for you? We all point to Gundam Wing as the sole pillar of our roots in Gundam. And you're supposed to be prideful of that. And you're supposed to be like really happy and acknowledge the fact that Gundam Wing was this important part in my life. That, that introduced me to Gundam and it, it, it brought me into this community and it, it built out everything. But the thing you're pointing at is a pile of trash. And that's 
kind of sad, and that's why it's overrated. Uh, at least for me, that's the way I see it. So, long story short, Gundam Wing is the most overrated Gundam, and you can disagree with me all you want, but at the end of the day, that's how I feel about it. I would love to know what you guys think in the comment section below, so. All right, and there you have it. Another episode of TV3 over and done with. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, if there was anything you want me to discuss further or anything I missed, feel free to leave your suggestion in the comment section down below. As for me, I'm off to go see Thor Ragnarok. I'm crossing my fingers that it is a good movie because, well, actually, you know what? I like the previous two Thor movies, despite all the hate they get. So I'm psyched to see Thor Ragnarok. In any case, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.